And welcome back to Stormworks Base. This is going to be a cooling tutorial, and so we're going to go through some of the basics of cooling. Um, I highly recommend you set up a test bench. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start by going in, and we're going to set up a test bench. So uh, we're going to go ahead, and I'm just going to build a little platform, and we're going to test. And this is how those of us who know how some of these things work know how some of these things work is we set up some tests, and we run them, and we see what happens. And... As we get different patches, things change, and we kind of figure out what's up. So, first thing, the basics. How to make this, uh, how to hook things up. So, let's go mod for modular. Uh, let's actually put up a, a pedestal first, so it's up at my face level. Let's go ahead, and we're going to grab a modular engine crankshaft. We're going to turn it like it would be. I'll just make this a uh, couple cylinders here. And then I'm going to add a couple cylinders on top. All right. Three cylinder. Just do three cylinder for now. All right. Uh, the engine's not going to run. It's not going to matter. So we're going to grab modular engine coolant manifold, right? This one here. We need to look at this. It has the four, four circles in that uh, square. We know that fits. So it needs to go on there. It can go any way like that. All right. We're going to put that in. Next. Most important thing with cooling is flow rate. All right. This is where a lot of people get into trouble is their flow rates are not very good. The higher your flow rate, the better you're going to be cooling. All right, pretty simple. So let's go in here, and the two most efficient. Now, everybody wants the best, most efficient thing. You don't always need that, but your two most efficient. People have done all sorts of testing on this, come up with charts. I'm not going to go into that. We'll just say that these two, the electric uh, fluid heat radiator, 5x5 five five and 3x3, three three. these are your, most, your two best efficient space-wise. Now, you don't always need this. I rarely use these but these will do it for you. Um, these will give you that, um, this will give you that cooling that you need. Uh, but again, I, you don't always need this. All right, and so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna put some, now look at when I click on this, uh, when I put some over, it says fluid A. If it says fluid A, it does not matter if it's in or out. The shorter your run, the fewer the pipes you need or have, the better. So first, let's do a test like this. Let's actually undo that, let's go down. Let's go right here, and we'll go up. All right, next here, I need to, I'm going to go over one, and we'll go up, and I'm going to use a small pump. All right, we have small pump, we have impellers, we have large. The large and the small have the same flow rates. There's no point in using this large. The flow rates are the same. So I use the small. All right, so now um, we just need to go in one direction. So one of the reasons we look at this is let's look at this again. Put the pipe up against it. It says flute coolant B. All right, so we're going to go in, and we'll go like this. I'm going to do infinite electricity. That way the pump doesn't slow down as our electrical is being used. Um, that's just going to give me consistent results. I'm going to use a constant on, constant on. Constant on is going to be plugged in to the pump and the radiator. All right. And this is going to simulate. The engine is not going to run. There's no engine there. All I care about is my flow rates. The higher the flow rate, the better the cooling. I'm going to make sure infinite electricity is on. All right. Let's look at it. So all we care about are the flow rates. If we look at the radiator, radiator spawns with water. As you see, people will tell you you need tanks. You do not need tanks. That is the old way. Notice. The radiator spawns with 89.3 liters of water in it. You do not need tanks. All right. You notice your coolant manifold has 7.1 liters in it. You do not need tanks. Now, let's look at our flow rates. The most important thing is stability. Notice 44.2, 44.2. It's rock solid. It's not oscillating. If it was going up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, you have a problem. It, you're not going to get good cooling. But as you notice, we have stable rates. 44.2 liters of... Uh, water moving through there. 44.2, 44.2. It's very stable. That means you're going to get pretty good cooling out of this. Remember, the higher the liters per second, the better your cooling. All right. So let's go ahead and bring this back in the workbench. And I'm just going to copy it. Let's make this better. Again, higher the, cool, higher the flow rates, better the cooling. Stick that right there. All right, now what most people are going to recommend and what I would recommend as well is double up your small pumps. 
Again, flow rate is king. Now, the highest number you can get on these pumps is 75, uh, about 70, between 75 and 76. Now, remember, look at this. See this black ring? That's the direction of flow, right? You want to go in a loop. So you need to go up through the radiator and then down. All right, the shorter you can run your pipes, the better. So if we could move this radiator so it could be even shorter, that would be even better. All right, but you see now we have du double pipes here. So we're going to hook this up here. Let's go check those numbers. Fifty-nine, sixty, sixty point. Okay, so we're pretty uh, stable at sixty. You notice we have a higher flow rate here. This is going to be running better. The shorter the run of these pumps, the better. All right. So you notice flow rate's going up, cooling's getting better. Let's copy this again. Let's try to just improve on this by shortening the pipes. But notice we don't have oscillation. No oscillation means we're getting good cooling. All right. So let's go ahead and we're going to cut this, put that there, cut this. Put that there. And I'm going to cut these pipes here. So what am I doing? I'm shortening my pipes. Uh, the, the shorter your, uh, the less essentially uh, distance your water has to travel, the, the greater your cooling is going to be. All right, so we're going to delete all these pipes off the top here. And I will just copy this radiator here and... Now, see that sitting directly. So we only have two elbows. That's all we have for piping. That's it, two elbows. Let's connect it back up. Make sure it's all merged. It is spawn. Let's check our flow rates now. So our one with the one pump is showing us, uh, where are we at here? Tooltips. 44.2, 60, 63.4. All right. So we're starting to see where our uh, stuff is running, all right? Higher you can get that, the better. All right, so let's continue here. So now, again, test benches are how you're going to figure things out. You want to make things, um, let's copy that. All right, so let's try some other things here. Try impeller pumps. These are always a pain to orient. So this is going to be, what's this? That is fluid out. All right. So it's going this direction. So let's, uh, all right. So let's try it with one impeller pump, fluid out. And I'm trying to see how to set this up so it's uh, not too much of a pain. Let's just delete that for now. Let's grab a radiator. I'll make this pretty simple here. So we'll try one. All right, so this fluid out is going to go through here. All right, fluid in needs to go on this side. Again, the shorter I can run my pipes, the better. All right, and now in order to run an impeller pump, I need some sort of torque. I can run it off the engine if I wanted, or I can run it off of a uh, pump, or a motor rather. And now I need a constant number and the constant number is one that will give us a full motor speed you do have to worry about uh, how much electricity this is going to use so we put that there and we'll turn our radiator on and let's go ahead and test this see how we look now you notice how it's much more compact what's my flow rate 50 63 44. So now look at this. Look at the difference here. This here is using up more space than this is, and this has a better flow rate. Again, 50.8, 44, 60, 63, 50. Okay. So let's see if we can improve this and make it still pretty, uh, pretty small footprint here. I think how to set this up. All right. Uh, let's cut out this. See if I can't stick it in here. Without being a pain. Um, 
these impellers are just a pain to set up sometimes, so I have to kind of read where they're pointing. So let's look. This is fluid out. That is fluid in. Okay. Let's see what's that? Fluid out, fluid in. Okay. Let me. I'm just trying to figure out how to orient this correctly. Just trying to also keep it as space conscious as possible. I just want to check this. So this is fluid out. It's going to go in this way. And then we need fluid out. So that's wrong. I'm just trying to set this up so that it's most space conscious here. What are you? So this is out. This needs to be, this one here needs to be against that. So this top one needs to be fluid in, fluid in. All right, I forgot what I had it as before. Um, it was 50, 50 something, 50 and change. Should have checked it first, but I forgot. All right, and let's check that. So that's now plugged in. Should just copy that. That's why I've been copying. Let's check our flow rates. 60. This one will, uh, see that's oscillating. You don't want oscillation. It'll take a second for this to, uh, I wonder if we're running out of water. But uh, this one is having oscillation issues. I don't know why. But see, that's what it looks like. Okay, so now we're actually getting up there. It's it's Water was stabilizing. But you notice that oscillation, if your numbers are moving like that, you're not getting good cooling. So until they're stable, you're not getting good cooling. 44, 60. So this over here has 60.8. This one has 60.0. Notice this is much more space conscious. So if you need more, if you need better space, the issue is you need to be careful of how much electricity these are running. Now these are running at 18.95. So we can do a test here. So this is at 60. Let me not just do what I said not to do last time. And let's actually copy this. Now let's stick it right here. All right. And again, the test continues here. So. This is what I recommend doing. Is it a little time consuming? Yes, but you start to learn how the game works and that way you're in, in good shape. So let's go ahead and grab one of these and we'll change one thing at a time that will um, be the scientific way to do it. RPS is king. So if you face the arrow towards the power source, that increases RPM. So let's go to a three to one. Let's see if this does anything. All right. Let's hook this all up. All right, spawn it. Now we'll go through our stack as everything stabilizes. So what are we running here? 60. 44. All right, so this one is having issues because of, look at how much, so this is a single running a big pipe loop. This is a double running 63. We get a little bit better than that, but you know, uh, just by cutting the pipes down. So we cut down, what is that? Two straights, uh, two straights and six elbows gives us three. This one here, we're running at 60.8. This one we're running at 60.8. You notice the um, RPS is still, so these electric motors, you can't really um, actually gear up. What you can do is you can reduce the amount of electricity you use and about all you can do. That's 60.8. So that kind of tells us where that is. So let's do another test here. All right. So I told you the large radiators are not your friends. Or I'm sorry. The large uh, pumps are not your friends. Let's prove it. Put one here. All right. So they max out at the same flow right now. It used to be different. So you see some old videos that says, hey, this video says this. That's because that video is old and it doesn't, it doesn't count anymore. All right, things change in game, so you have to keep that in mind. So let's go to pump. All right, so we'll decide our direction of flow here. And can I do this with efficient space usage here? Kind of. Okay. All right, so we have a loop here. Let's go ahead and... Trying to minimize my pipe usage as much as possible here. So, then we're going to get 
you know, the more pipes, the lower the flow rate's going to be. Yeah, especially doing elbows and T-pieces. T-pieces kill flow rates. So uh, you'll see a lot of people say don't use T-pieces. That's because anything like that will kill flow rates. Eventually, as you get longer and longer pipes, you're going to need more pumps to boost it back up. All right, and let's hook this last one up here before I forget. All right, let's hook all this in. So radiator here comes on and these two pumps. All right, let's check this one. Sixty. This one here is sixty. So you notice I just put two big pumps in there. You notice how much more space this takes up, and we're not getting any benefit out of it. All right, that's why people will tell you don't bother using those. All right, so it's uh, not worth using those. Okay. So you can try other things. You can try combinations of things if you wanted. Um, again. The issue is going to be you don't want to increase the amount of space you're taking up. So let's try something here. Let's grab this one. Again, a lot of this is me trying it too. Just keep testing. You notice this doesn't take too long. Video has been going on for 16 minutes, and I've tested a lot of stuff here. And it gives you good visual representations of what you need to do. Now, if you start putting things in series, you're going to get into issues where you have, um, where you end up, the longer the run you have to make, um, you're just going to end up costing yourself flow rate. So if you start stacking stuff up, the pumps are having to push a longer distance. So let's do a kind of a compound here. So what I'll do is I'll delete out this. And I need to run three. So let's do kind of a hybrid here. So it's going this way. Let's grab one of these. Again, no point using the large ones. They don't do anything for us, but cost us flow rate. So this here, we're going to be getting some pipe length here. We are adding three elbows here to this. All right, let's go ahead, and that's good there, and let's hook these up. All right, let's check this one now. See, I have no clue what this is going to be either, but testing is going to be show me... Does this give me any benefit? So what are we at here? 60. So I think we pretty much answer ourselves there. Nope. That's worse. All right. Now, you do have to worry about things, like I said, with uh, how much is this electric uh, motor running. So we can kind of tell. Let's test it. So let's test and see what, uh, let's see how these systems work electrically. So really quickly, So very quick here, um, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to see what I want to test. Let's test this one here and this one here. So I'll go to electricity. We'll plumb this sucker up here. We'll plumb this sucker up here. And I'll take two dials. Stick them next to each other so I can look at them. Uh, zero to one. Zero to one. Go ahead and I will. Uh, so to make sure that those dials aren't using any of our electricity, we don't want them to use. I'm going to go like that. That's going to have its own battery. And then I'm going to run to the two dials here. All right. So that's going to give me that. Next thing I want to do, I want to. So I'm going to run these and I'm going to see. Um, what the electricity looks like. So we'll go ahead and spawn it. I'm going to get close. We have infinite electricity, so both dials should be stay, stay static on one, as you notice. Now let's kick them off. Look at this one. Look at this one. This one is, what's one, two, three, four, five. Five digits is what that's pulling down to. Look at this one. So this one is pushing 63 liters. This one is pushing 60 point liters, 60.8 uh, liters. But look at the battery usage. This one is still on 99%. Has dro not dropped below 99% yet. Look at this one. This one is killing us. So these are the kind of tests you need to do. You need robust electrical production on this one. So you're getting worse performance. And you're getting a little bit of space savings, not a ton. 
and look at the battery usage. We're still on 99%. We haven't gone under 99% yet. This one's about ready to kill our battery. And as that battery dies, we're going to start losing flow rate. Notice the RPS is going down. Now, look at the RPS, though. At 4 RPS, we still have 60 liters per, per second. So that teaches us something, right? We don't need the maximum. So what I'm going to do is watch that RPS number. When that RPS number gets to where that 60.8 goes down, I'm going to remember that. So we're 2.3, we're still good. Still good. So watch this. This is this is going to be interesting here. This is again, I'm learning some stuff here myself. We're still good. Notice that 60.8 has not changed. We are almost out of battery. We're down below one. But notice my, okay, so 1 RPS. Okay, there. So we need about, let's say, 1.5 RPS. All right. So that's good to know. So now watch this. Let's take a throttle. And the throttle is going to be connected to the same battery that these gauges are. It's not going to be connected to this. And now I want to set this to, what, what was it? Um, it was like... What is it? Uh, 1.5 RPS. So let's make this really sensitive, or really light on sensitivity. Now let's go like this. So instead of setting this as a constant 1, that's overkill. We don't need that. Let's set it with the throttle. All right, so I'm going to go turn infant electricity on. And I'm going to dial up the RPS on this. Okay, so uh, did I do too much? Let's see. So 1.5. So see, I set the RPS value to 1.5. That's a throttle value of 0 0.042. Okay. Notice my liters per second, 60.8 liters per second. All right. Now let's kill the. Uh, um, let's take off of electricity. Now watch it. Notice it's still using more electricity. We're getting less. So this is about, let's see if I can go a little lower. 60.8. I'm going to keep kicking this down until I can get it um, where we lose. Maybe. Still good. Still good. So this is the kind of testing you need to do to, uh, as long as we're within 1 RPS. Okay, there we go. So we need to be 1.0 something. So let's keep it at 60.8. So right there is good. Check the electricity. This is still an electrical hog. We're at 92% and dropping. We're at 99%. So kind of a quick little lesson what we learned here is this is king right now. This is giving us the best flow rate, which is why you see most people will use this system. You have these two small pumps. You try to make the the piping as short as possible. Electric radiator, again, I'm just doing them all as the same test. You don't have to use these electric radiators. I use other things as well. Um, and they give you good flow rates. All right, so let's go back in the workbench. All right, so let's show you something else. And so we're going to ignore the electrical flow of this because I'm going to simulate this. And so because I'm simulating this, this won't be perfect. Uh, let's go ahead. I actually don't need all this crap. Uh, let's build something new here. So let's go up here. And I'm going to fake a modular engine. All right. So I'm going to fake a modular engine. And so I'm going to do a modular engine crankshaft. And so the other pump system you see people use is the engine-driven pump. Now, some people say, why aren't you using electric radiator? Why aren't you using this? Well, sometimes you, if you build your build so it doesn't make a lot of heat, you don't need the best heating system possible, right? So let's try it out. We'll do the same thing here, right? Um, so we have a three-cylinder here. The difference now, I'll put a cooling manifold on here in the center. Now, the difference here is I'm going to put a um, belt-driven belt drive on there. All right, I'm going to put a engine driven fluid pump put one there and we will put one here like that let's look at these that is out out okay 
And so let's see how we want to do this. So let's try... Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'll screw it up there. Let's go grab this. I want to do the shortest run I can do. So let's try this. Now, I'm not going to worry about the electricity on this. Normally, the engine itself would be running the electricity. We're not going to do that on this one. So this one's going to come up. Is that? That's out. That's out. I'm trying to think of the best way to run this here. Okay, so I'm going to move this here like this. So this one here is in. So this one here is in. So I'm going to make this as compact as possible. I'm just moving some stuff. So that's in. comes out. All right. So it comes in from the radiator or it goes out. Uh, let's run it as one to start with, and then we'll we'll integrate the other one there. All right, so now we're going to do one pump to start with. We'll see if two pumps gives us any advantage. Again, we'll do this scientifically. All right, so the water comes down through the radiator into the pump, up and around, and back in the radiator. Now, how are we going to power this, right? Normally, the engine would be turning, and this would power it. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to fake it by putting an electric motor on there, and that's why I'm not going to care about what my um, I'm not going to care about what my electricity usage is on this one because you would be pumping it with diesel. And so what I want to do is I want to take one value. I want to go to the clutch. I want to go to this. I want to go uh, maximum clutch pressure of one on that. I want to go turn my radiator on. And all I care about on this one is flow rate. So let's go ahead and I will go infinite electricity goes back on. Let's check the flow rate on this sucker. And it actually makes the engine noise. So we're at 19.3 RPS. If we look at this pump, clutch pressure is 1. We're getting 45.9 liters per second. Okay. So you notice how nice and compact this is compared to the others. So if your engine is not producing a lot of heat, this is super compact. This is nice and tiny. So if you're having space problems, these are fine. Now notice, though, that's 45.9. Let's look at over here, try to find our closest one. 60, 44.2. So this here, single modular engine fluid pump running at 19 um, RPS. Now remember, if it's running lower than 19 RPS, we're going to get less flow. The reason this belt is moving at the speed of the engine. So we need to be at 19 RPS to make that work for us, right? So we're getting a um, 45.9. So we actually beat the single pump system, right? This is a single pump system here. We beat it, all right? We beat this one pump right here, and we do it with less space, all right? So now let's go in. More testing. So I kind of enjoy testing. I know a lot of people don't, but at the end of the day, if you want to have successful builds, if you want to learn some stuff about the game, um, grab the wrong one, you want to um, test. Testing is how you're going to figure out stuff about this game. And so all the great people on the YouTube discussions, those of us who make some of these tutorial videos, um, like I'm doing a lot of testing here myself, trying to figure it out. Like some things I've learned and forgotten and I'm relearning. And so this is a good way to do it. You know, I still do to my builds. If I'm having a cooling problem, I do a bunch of testing, see if I can't get it uh, better. So let's try to use a secondary pump here and get better flow rates. So um, I can still check the old one. That's why I le I'm leaving the old ones. I can just walk back and check it so I don't have to write it down or remember it. So let's see where I want this. Um, if I hit the U key, now it's up. So this is going to go out. So the water's coming out. And I need to go, let me see. Try to think how to set this up right. So let's go. Let's go like that. What are we talking here? That's water in. So this, the issue with this one is, um, is how far my, how far my run is going to have to be with my pipes. I'm adding pipes, so I might not get much actual run. So fluid out is going to go here. Fluid in, it goes in there. So this is going to be a long. I can't even do that. Um, let's see. So this is going to be a very long uh, pipe run. So this probably is not going to be very efficient. You notice one of the reasons why I did this was space. We're losing all our space benefit with this as well. So this is really killing our space benefit just because I can't turn these pumps properly. But um, let's test it anyway and see where we're at. See how? So you see all this pipe? As I add more and more pipe, we're uh, losing flow rate. So let's see. Let's go ahead and we'll connect everything up. So radiator comes on and then we want to turn the 
that on, that on, these two on. Let's run it. So now this has two pumps. All right, so what is our flow rate? Notice uh, we're starting with oscillation, 29. Okay, so with two pumps, we're doing worse. Why are we doing worse? All this piping is lost flow. Every time we bend it and turn it, we're losing flow. So as you can see, sometimes simple is better. This is tiny, compact, and it does it for us. It keeps us, uh, it keeps that going nicely. All right, so you want to test these things. So some things we've learned here. Don't use these big old Johnnies. 60, 60. These are identical. And as you notice, these are bigger. And there's no point in using these bigger ones. And I bet these will probably cost you more money, too. And I bet these use more electricity. Um... You know, your best set setup is going to be where your pipes are the shortest. 63.4. We're beating the big ones. We're beating all these because we have as short of pipes as we can get. All right. These. These are electric hungry. All right. Uh, right now, this one is, is oscillating. But um, this is very electric hungry. All right. These are using up electricity like crazy. All right. And so, uh, this is why, because I didn't put the throttle up. But um, these are going to use up a lot of electricity. So even at a, slow, uh, even a low RPS, you're going to be using up a ton of electricity. You notice that test we had. These are hungry for electricity. These here are driven by your engine. They're pretty good. You notice the flow rate, right? We could get 60 with dual, but look at the space. So this is going to be one of your best space. And... We ignore the electricity we're running up because this is run by the engine. But remember, this is at a constant 19 RPS. So, for example, if you're running a generator and it's running at 19 RPS, this is a great way to cool it if it's tiny. All right. Doubling up the pumps doesn't mean that you're going to get better efficiency if you have to run long piping. So, again, keep your pipes nice and short. This one runs much better than that one. And let's see if we can actually, uh, I want to do one super quick test here. Um, let's test something here really quick. Let's actually grab this one and see if I can't shorten the run on the pipes and make this even better. And so this is our space king for a modular engine. So if you, uh, you know, a bunch of people in my challenge have been having issues with space, right? It's a small trainer aircraft. They're building it, having cooling problems. So the shorter you can run this, the better. So let's count our pipe segments. One, two, three elbows, four elbows in a straight. All right, four elbows in a straight. So let's see if I can beat that. If I can beat that, we're in good shape. So let's cut this. And let's go there. So I need to beat four elbows and a straight. So I think we've beaten it. Looks like we've beaten it to me. All right, let's try this one. Hook it all up. So turn the, turn the radiator on, and then we'll do a maximum on the clutch and the um, that clutch as well, and then we'll do a maximum on that. Let's try it. All right, so first we'll go back to, you can hear the engine noise because uh, it's turning it, but... Um, 45.9. 45.2. This one's worse. All right. I don't know why this one's worse, but this one's worse. Um, all right, you notice this one's worse. Let me double check my RPS. So again, a lot of this is testing, man. This turned out to be worse. I don't even know myself why this is worse. That's on. 45.2. This is actually running worse than the other one. I don't know why. This is one, two, three elbows. This has one, two, three elbows, and one straight. Four elbows. To actually, what is it? One, two, three, four. Four elbows. This has one, two, three. This has one fewer elbows and no straights, and this one's running worse. So beats me, man. I don't know why. But th the answer of the day is testing. Let's check the clutch. Uh, this should be 100% clutch. So uh, at the end of the day, cooling is about testing and flow rate. The main thing you're learning here is that you, I think you really need to test these things out. 
And so, and you can make some sacrifices. This here is my Space King. That really make, gives me a nice compact engine. But I have to keep up at 19 RPS. Um, let's try something really quick here. So let's test something. I don't know how this is going to turn out myself. But let's go ahead and let's put in a throttle. Let's command our, our RPM of our engine. We're testing it with the electric motor here. But let's compa command that with this throttle. Go down to like 5%. And we'll make this the end of the video here. Um, but, you know, this is how you get cooling is the better their flow rates, no oscillation, and you're in good shape. So we have zero here. Let's go up to a little bit here. Let's try to get that up to what were we at? 45.9. So let's see how low I can run my RPS. Now notice the oscillation. I don't like the oscillation. Oscillation is not good cooling. See how it's oscillating? That's not good cooling. All right. But generally, if you're running something like a car that's not stable, it's going to be, um, you're not going to get oscillation anyway. You know, you don't need a ton of cooling. All right, so there's 45.9 there. Where are we at here? Yeah, so we're at 1. So um, you see we can decrease a little bit here. We As we decrease the thrust of our engine, we are going to lose some on here. What's that? So I go down on throttle as long as my RPS is up, we're good. All right, so as you notice here, we're getting pretty good. Um, you know, we still have our 45.9, but we have to keep our engine up. If I go down and slow this engine down, as the RPS comes down, let's do about half. So about there, that's about half of what we had. You notice we get oscillation, so we're probably not cooling very well here. But we're going to be producing our most heat at full throttle anyway on the engine. Now it's stabilizing, you can see. Um, so with this one, as the engine goes down in RPM, producing less heat, we're also producing less cooling. All right, so that's why some why these tend to be favored um, is as you, you know, if you decrease the RPS of the engine, you're actually going to decrease, you're going to continue with 63.4 liters even if the engine slows down. So I hope you guys found this interesting and informative. I'll put this up on the workshop. Um, you can kind of test it. But this gives you a little bit of an understanding of how these operate. You know, like this one surprised me. This one here is running um, less efficiently than the one back there. Let me just double check 100%. Uh, this should be 45.9, I think, when it's at max thrust or max RPS, rather. 45.9. This one, I get 45.2, and I have fewer elbows and fewer straight pipe sections i have no clue why no idea why but um that's the way it is so again testing is the king here we see which ones are our best ones we see which ones eat electricity like crazy these are monsters eating electricity um so your best bet generally is going to be these and then i would do these um engine driven ones um, if you want to save space, because you can see how space conscious this is. So you have a tiny little car, this is the way to go. Also, you need to think of how a car works, right? You rev up, you rev down. You rev up, you rev down. You make heat, you stop making heat. You make heat, you stop making heat. You make heat, you stop making heat. A boat, a lot of people struggle with boats. Why? Boat is, you put full throttle, you keep it at full throttle all the time. You make heat, 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 heat. All right. So hope you guys found this interesting. Hope this helps with your cooling. And I will see you in the next one.